Hi everybody, Martin at Flickin' Feathers again today. I'm tying a fantastic little buzzer pattern. This is Stan Headley's Blushing Buzzer. Very, very effective. Uh, you could fish it like a wet fly or swing it like a buzzer, like a nymph. Um, well worth tying some of these up if you fish still waters. As always, I'll put a materials list in the description along with a link to the Patreon page for anyone that wants to support the channel. Get access to the members only content as well as being entered into the monthly giveaways. So I've got my hook in my vice. This is a Yorkshire Sedge style hook, so a Camazan B420. I believe Stan originally used the partridge hook, but I prefer this. And this is a size 12. Tie these 10s, 12s, 14s. And I'm just running on some Uni 80 in black. Oops. I'm going to Watch your hook point come right round the bend and back up. And then back then, no other way. And back up. Wait, what finish this? Right. Um, if you're tying like a half dozen of these or whatever, do all the abdomens, right? And then you can finish the flies. Two coats of varnish you need, right? Don't go nuts. Just make sure you've got everything coated. So kind of strand of fluff there. Catch that later. Just make sure that everything's well coated and the varnish is spread. Right. Give it two light coats, right? You don't want this globbing up. Take that away to dry. And then here's one that I've already done. Right. Now you could use UV resin but I still prefer varnish on the, th the buzzers, especially when there's only a couple of layers of thread. I feel that the the varnish gives a better and more durable finish it, and it only takes a wee bit longer. So I've started my thread back up and I'm running it back to like where the curve's about to start again. I'm going to take four strands of glow bright number eight. I, mean, I don't suppose it would matter if you used five, but four is what Stan recommends. We catch it in on my side and I'm pulling it down to the underside of the the shank and then we'll pull the other ends over and we'll do the same so that the cheeks are coming up from below and then we'll get a single peacock hurdle tie it in I'll just break away that weak tip there if you want to you don't need to do this, but it helps if you touch a super glue and then wind a small, slim thorax. Come across your thread and tie it off. And you can hopefully see I've still left an eye and a half length uh, behind the eye of the hook there, clear. 
But you grab my four strands of globe, right? You can brush them together if you want, I've no bothered. I'm going to pull them up and catch them on top. Same on this side, pull them up and catch them on top so they're tied above right, the, the hook shank. So at the back they're below, at the front they're above. And we'll just come in and trim that away. Same on this side, nice and tight. Then we'll just come into the front there, tidy up. And the last thing is a wee black hen hackle. And you want this to be nice and sparse. And this is a great fly um, for both browns and rainbows in the lakes and lochs. Tying this in by the tip, fold the tip back, I'll just reach in if I can, break that away, and then I only want a turn and a half, two turns, right, you need to keep this really sparse, one, two, take me up to there. Take everything, fold it back, tie over it, snap that away. And there you can see you've got that wee sparse hen hackle there. Just gives it a wee bit of life. Breathes in the water, slows the sink a wee bit, it's, it's wonderful. So, that's it. It's a really easy fleet fly to tie. Um, and it just catches fish like crazy. If there's midges coming off, black bu black buzzers coming off, and you're on a boat, tie one of these on. That's it. So whip finished. Trim your thread. And just varnish the head. And that's it. So I hope that was useful. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up below and subscribe to my channel. Tight lines guys, bye.